everybody, my name is Nyan. I'm the Black Female Engineer. I provide content for new and aspiring software engineers. And today we are talking about the top myths people have about software engineers. Yeah, y'all be spreading spreading lies. Some of y'all, some of y'all. So let's get to number it. one. I think this myth is kind of the most or ah, like top two, top three of the most harmful ones, because I feel like it's this one that deters the most people. And that is you need to be good at math lies no you really don't software engineering is just such a blanket statement and there's so many specific jobs and niches within it that not all of them require you to be good at math with what i do math really isn't a thing if you know one plus one then i think you're good i think you're good because the only time i use math is when it's needed for the viewer so for example i want to present a percentage on the viewer so okay let me do x divided by y times 100 and i put that in there so the viewer can see that percent that is the extent of the math use um, in my specific job. There are roles, of course, in sectors and niches that do require more extensive knowledge in math and calculus and whatnot. But if you don't like math and you don't want to deal with that, don't. Number two, and I think this meshes with number one a ton, is that you need to be the super genius to be a software engineer. This is something that a lot of people will say to me when they ask what I do and I say, oh, I'm a software engineer. They're like, oh, so you must be really smart. And like, well, <laughs> to me, it's, it's always hard to follow that up because my thing is like, well, you don't need to be a genius to be a software engineer. That doesn't mean I'm not really smart. I'm not saying, no, I'm not smart, but that doesn't necessarily relate with one another it's like saying oh i'm a software engineer it's like oh so you must love the color red it's like well yeah i love the color red but that doesn't have to do with my success on the job really you know what i mean it's not that you need to be the super genius to be a software engineer what you need to do is be a problem solver you need to be able to actually like puzzles and getting things together being able to see some gray area and mesh the pieces together based on the different information you find also kind of like an investigator being able to say like okay so this is the scene of the crime right here as i'm really talking about like broken code this is the scene of the crime let me see where i can get to resolve this to figure out the solution for x y and z google talking with other people stack overflow x y and z let's see where we can find answers and then bring it back home with us i feel like a lot of people specifically software engineers are afraid to say that because they're afraid of i don't even know breaking that facade of like, oh they're uber smart and they know like yo like let's call it for what it is like you are just a really great problem solver maybe you are super smart like i'm not saying software engineers are not super smart but being super smart and being just a hyper genius does not necessarily mean that you're going to be a good software engineer and reverse not being a hyper genius or super smart or whatever it doesn't mean you're going to be a bad software engineer it's all really what it comes down to is your liking and ability to solve puzzles number three i really won't spend too much time on it because that is what this entire channel is devoted to and that is that you need a computer science degree to be a software engineer you do not and I have a video above that really goes more into this, really goes into top, top, top companies like Google, like Facebook, like Pinterest that hire, even if you don't have a degree, a degree, not just like, oh, I don't have a computer science degree, but I have a degree in interpretive dancing, but like, no, home girl came out of high school with her GED and did the work and now knows how to code and could get a job at Google. And so that's what I'm talking about there. Like you do not need a degree. You need to be able to do the work. And that's what's so beautiful about this space. This career is at the end of the day, people just care that you can do the work. And so if you can do it, great. Like pull up a seat, like damn, come on. Come on. So yes, that's number three. Number four, software engineers are introverts. That's quite the myth. There are some people who are introverts and there are some people who are not like everything and everywhere in life. There are some people who, yeah, like to do their work solo and call it a day, but 
you need to be comfortable asking questions and reaching out to people and presenting. I just now had a presentation in front of project managers that I've never met before in a whole different departments, little old me presenting to these 30, 40, 50 year old people being like, hey, yeah, so this is what's this is what's going on. And so, yeah, you need to be able to communicate and be comfortable doing so because you also, even if you're not presenting and things like that, you need to be able to communicate your code. And so it's not enough for you to just know how to code. You need to know how to communicate your ideas, communicate your questions and communicate to other people to really be that amazing developer in my eye. Next, it's boring. I don't really know where this myth comes from. I think maybe with the idea that, oh, as a software engineer, you just sit in front of a screen all day and don't talk to anyone and that's just your whole nine to five every single day till the day you die. I don't know if that's where that idea comes from that it's boring, but I love my job, y'all. Like I constantly, this is be odd, but I constantly have to make myself not work on a weekend. Like I'll be sitting here, I'm like, oh, I don't really have anything to do. Like I would love to continue developing that web app. But be like, no, Naya, like, no, take take the break, take a second. Um, and it's truly because I just really love the job, really love the work. And it comes from loving puzzles and solving problems and figuring out solutions. That's what's interesting to me. That's what's captivating to me. And if you're a person who, like, let's say loves true crime, you likely would like a career like this because and I, I hate i can't believe i'm thinking about crime constantly thinking about this work and whatnot but it truly often feels like that like we are investigating solutions to what's going on here especially when you're doing bug fixes and someone approaches you with x and x problems it feels like you're a detective now like okay let's see where it went wrong let's see all the different solutions let's talk to these people get our heads together and figure out a solution for this i really love it and i love true crime and it's because of that whole detective aspect this whole problem solving aspect which is the exact same type of mind you need as a software engineer and so no it is not boring at all it's extremely exciting and especially when you think about once you solve that problem oh my goodness you just want to leap up you want to call everybody in their mama but then you remember nobody cares <laughs> other than you, like other than you. So you just kind of like do your happy dance by yourself and call it a day. But no, it is not boring. Like I said earlier, there's so many different sectors and so many different niches in software engineering. And so you just need to find that niche that intrigues you the most. And lastly, that you must be an expert at X and X language. No, no, you just need to know how things work enough that you can get by Googling, <laughs> Googling throughout your work day. So I, my knowledge is in JavaScript. That's how I learned. And my work has been in Python. I Google always till Sunday, but I get my work done in pretty, in my opinion, pretty okay time because I know what, I know the steps to solving the problem. You know what I mean? I know that I would do like a for loop here and I would create this function here, but I may not know Python very well. And so I just Google, okay, how to do a for loop, how to do X and X function and whatnot in Python. And that's really what I do constantly. And then what's so funny is the other day, and I'm not afraid to say this because I feel like a lot of people be hush hush about software engineering, making it seem like nobody ever makes mistakes or whatnot, which is not true. But the other day, like literally like minutes ago, I was out here developing in Python and then I had to switch over to a JavaScript file and I needed a for loop. And I started writing the for loop in like in, with Python syntax. For those of you who don't know, syntax is basically me trying to write an, a book in English, but I'm using Spanish words. And so I'm like, wait, no, this isn't the right, you know, syntax and whatnot. But then for the life of me, I couldn't remember how to do a for loop in JavaScript. I was like, oh my goodness, I've been doing for loops in Python. Like, how do I do it in JavaScript? And that's, JavaScript is the language I learned in. And so I was like, oh my goodness, Naya, girl, you really don't know how to do this. And so I had to Google, like, yo, Google, how, Siri, 
how do I do a for loop in JavaScript again? And then I was like, oh, there we go. And then I coded that out. And that's extremely normal and extremely common. Like it's not even something to blink about or to lose sleep over or to like even think about for a second. There's this mindset of like, oh, like the really good programmers, they do everything from their head. They have memorized every single type of function and how to do X, Y, and Z. And they just code out at one time and boom, there you go. And it wasn't until my instructor from Coding Bootcamp said, and I'm going to butcher this, so like if anyone from Google is watching this or, or anything, please don't come at me. The idea is there, but the numbers will be wrong. But they, were, they said something to the effect of Gmail, if you code it out, if you just try to code the lines, it takes only about like, let's say like eight to 12 hours to code the program, just coding it out. But when you think about the amount of time it took to develop it and the amount of people that had to come together to develop it, it took not eight hours, I can assure you that. And that's because you don't just know these processes and these systems and these functions and how to solve these problems. What you know is that you are a problem solver and you will figure it out. You'll go to different people, you go to different resources, you will test and test and test and try again and try again and keep sticking and throwing things at a wall until finally something sticks. And then you do it again for your next line of code and your next line of code. So it takes weeks and months and years to develop something that when it's finished, the coding of it actually takes just hours to do. And so remember that when you are beating yourself up for like, oh shoot, I don't, I keep having to Google like X, Y, and Z. It's like, no. Be comfortable doing that because that's not going to stop anytime soon. So there we go, everybody. The top myths people have about software engineers and kind of not even people have about software engineers, but the top myths software engineers may have about software engineers. And they might think that they're like the bad software engineer because they're not fitting into that box. Like again, like knowing languages at an expert level or memorizing languages and syntax and everything like, no, those are myths calm down you're doing great and so yeah hopefully that helps you know just loosen you up a little bit make you not as scared um to be in this field if you're trying to be in this field if you're new to this field hopefully that eases your mind a little bit and makes you a little bit more comfortable because yeah i really want to be super authentic on this channel and tell you like no I, these are the things i don't know these are the things i don't know these are the things i don't know and i think it's about time more people started doing that and so yeah let's Let's start here. And so hopefully this was helpful and somewhat entertaining. But yes, please leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what myths or what, yeah, what thoughts you have about software engineers. And let's start a little conversation. And so yes, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all later. Bye.